expecting me today to tell you a very exciting story of how I got my first PC as a little child back in the 90s, learned how to program very quickly, and then started writing very long scripts of artificial intelligence algorithms to create an army of robots to invade our planet, uh, sorry, to save our planet. <laughs> I'm afraid I might disappoint you, but my story is a rather boring one. It begins with this. Do you know what that is? Yes, that is a VCR. But let me tell you what I thought it was back in the day when I was a little child. Back at home, we used to have a huge VHS collection. My favorite one was the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I know, I know, in my defense, it was a fairly popular TV show back then. So whenever I was watching Power Rangers, in my mind, I was creating this whole story of what was actually happening inside this technological miracle, the VCR. All the actions, dialogues, fights, yeah! I thought they were actually happening live, performed by tiny humans in the VCR. <laughs> I assumed this happened every single time I was watching an episode. I was creating this fictional story in my mind and spent hours and hours thinking about it and trying to figure it all out. Now, three decades later, I would say that my imagination and the passion for technology have remained the same, but perhaps I understand how things work a little bit better. I moved on to a more realistic but equally exciting area, that of artificial intelligence, or AI. I admit, though, that when I started studying, I thought that the main use would be something that sounds big, complex, fascinating, almost monster-like, such as space exploration, self-driving cars, and robots. Little did I know as a student that several years later, I would be investigating ways that AI technologies can be applied and have a huge impact on areas that are not as popular and not as widely explored. These less glamorous areas have a very substantive effect on our future, or more precisely, on our sustainable future, that mainly involves achieving our net zero targets over the next couple of decades, specifically balancing between the carbon emitted into the atmosphere and the carbon removed from it. One of the overlooked areas that has one of the biggest environmental footprints is agriculture. Considering that food production is important for every single human being, right? Not sure about self-driving cars, though. And also that agriculture is directly responsible for about 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions, I thought, why not start developing AI technologies that can contribute to agricultural sustainability? Let me tell you a quick story. Everything started back in 2015 when the life was created and two others were destroyed, the birth of my daughter. As a little human, she very quickly started observing the environment, interacting and sharing information with us, and making some basic decisions. Two years later, 2017, another drama emerged, the birth of my son. Similar concept here, he very quickly started observing the world, interacting with us, and making some decisions. Poor ones, but decisions nevertheless. <laughs> there was a difference, though. He had a sibling to more closely interact with, learn from, and exchange some basic knowledge in the form of how they could collectively irritate their parents, or sometimes do something useful, such as helping me plant some strawberry seeds in a small DIY polytunnel we have in our garden. You see, through interacting, collaborating, and sharing information with each other, they're able to improve their learning processes, make smarter and better informed decisions, and perhaps irritate us a bit less. When we conceptualize and develop AI systems, we can see some similarities with how we humans learn and expand upon our knowledge base. Firstly, we need something that we can use to observe the environment, such as cameras, sensors, scanners, etc., that can collect good quality data, a concept similar to how we humans do as well with our senses. Secondly, we need a mechanism that can be used to share information and data across multiple systems, for instance, via the internet and the cloud. Again, a similar concept with how we humans communicate with each other in a day-to-day -day interaction, physically or otherwise. And thirdly, we need an AI-based decision support system that can learn 
to make decisions and solve complex tasks. Similar logic with how we humans make decisions as well. But the difference being how well AI systems can automate processes and identify patterns across vast amounts of diverse types of data. That is where AI systems usually excel compared to humans. Now, because I do love my kids, sometimes, I would like to contribute to making our world a bit more sustainable so that they can prosper, grow healthy, and live a better life when they are in charge of it. When we talk about sustainability or sustainable development, we mean development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the abilities of the future generation to do the same. To say it even more simply, we are working on things now to help us to live and thrive and not compromise the ability of the future generations to do the same. In practice, that involves environmental sustainability, but also financial sustainability. In the agricultural setting, that means that any interventions needed to reduce the sector's greenhouse gas emissions should also consider the financial sustainability of the sector from farm to fork. Let us consider strawberry production as an example. A grower's objective is twofold. First, maximize the strawberry produce or yield, which contributes to the financial sustainability. And secondly, to reduce the farm's greenhouse gas emissions, which will also have a very positive effect on the net zero targets and subsequently on environmental sustainability. Using the three-step process I described earlier, an AI-based decision support system will involve A, observing the environment by collecting data about the crops, microclimatic data in the polytunnels, such as humidity and temperature, soil properties, water and energy consumption, costs related to production, storage, and transport to retailers, and also weather data, given that weather can have a huge effect on how crops perform. Now, all of this data, some of which is routinely collected, but others is not, could provide us with very important insights into the crop performance and other related areas, such as water and energy usage, which also contribute to the carbon footprint. Oh, lots of data, right? Secondly, sharing information across various stages in the whole supply chain from farm to fork, which allows for much larger data sets to be aggregated, analyzed, and processed. This could provide even more comprehensive insights into how things perform, not only within a specific farm, but across several farms. And third, decision making by developing bespoke AI technologies, such as machine learning and artificial neural networks. These are techniques very similar to the ones that your smartphones use to take pictures today. Such AI systems can be trained with the data we observed and shared, and can be used as a support mechanism to support growers in making better and smarter decisions, and greener decisions, on the two tasks we talked about earlier. The first is strawberry yield forecasting, namely predicting what the harvestable crop will be in one to three weeks ahead, a process very important for the sector for managing demand and supply. Over or underestimating the amount of produce can lead to food waste or food shortages, respectively, that can have both environmental and financial repercussions for the growers and the whole sector. The second relates to improving agricultural sustainability by identifying patterns in the data that would allow us to prescribe actions and find pathways to use less energy and less water to grow crops. We assume that the local fruit will have a lower carbon footprint, and perhaps it does, but unless we measure every step and aspect of the strawberry's journey and life cycle, we can only guess at the answer, let alone inform our action planning for the future. Now, imagine if we had the data and the AI technologies that allowed us to use half the energy and half the water to grow the same strawberry, and that we could do the same for every crop, on every farm, in every country. 
building a more sustainable future and, in fact, a more sustainable present is by no means an easy task. It requires us to keep conducting cutting-edge research and innovating across multiple scientific disciplines and sectors, including AI. In particular for agriculture, though, the about 10% of all greenhouse gas emissions that the sector is directly responsible for suggests that interventions with novel technologies are needed as a step change towards achieving the sector's net zero targets over the next couple of decades. But in the grand scheme of things, that is not only specific to agriculture. Similar technologies can be transformative to realizing the net zero targets in other sectors, such as energy, industry, and transportation. But there's one more thing that is very important and should be embedded in the whole process and across all stages. Co-creation. This is the part where it becomes important for you as you are listening to this information, you can start imagining how you could collaborate and co-create with these technologies. You see, sharing information and data, just like my kids do, is not enough on its own. Novel ideas, new perspectives, and effective solutions, no matter how silly they might look like, require people with diverse set of skills from different backgrounds and across multiple disciplines to come and work together, just like Power Rangers did. Co-designed solutions are needed to bring about the much-needed revolution if we are going to meet our net zero targets and give our children an attractive, sustainable future. Thank you.